Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Smoke. I am your host, Kareem Ford. We are here at Smoke Kings in LA, and I have a special guest with me today, Mr. Ian Parkinson, owner of Crosswind Cigars. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Of Thank course. Thank you very much. It's of course. A wonderful day. Yes. So let's let's get started, man. Let's give us a little bit of your background. Where are you from? How did you grow up? Well, I'm originally from Kingston, Jamaica. Um, big up, Kingston, Jamaica. Um, I was uh, born from a Jamaican family, emigrated to the United States in uh, 1979. My mom brought me up here, lived in Connecticut from the age of uh, seven all the way up until 18. Mm. And then I joined the Marine Corps from there. And once I joined the Marine Corps and I went all over the world after that, um, experienced a lot of different uh, you know, cultures, religion, people, so it was it was very well, uh, very good for me actually to do that because a kid coming from Jamaica and traveling the world and having seen that you know seen the world like and, and like that so it, it really opened me up to you know what other people's lives are all about. Once I was overseas, I did a lot of traveling in the Middle East mm. and uh, I was introduced to cigars. Mm. I uh, smoked cigars with shakes kings that were you know in, in their palaces and you know i smoke uh you know the finest cigars you can f ever find and i realized that you know cigars are the great equalizer mm. because it doesn't matter how much money you have if you can sit down and smoke a cigar and have a conversation over a cigar that is the equalizer mm. they don't care how much money you have right you understand the leaf sure and you appreciate the leaf. Sure. They love you. So So how do you go from that to saying owner, you know, ownership? I want to own my so how do you go from having a love and a passion for it, right? Yeah. To transitioning into ownership. How does that work? Well, it, it's strange. I was, uh, I smoked a lot of cigars, like I said, and I realized that not all cigars are created equal. There's mm. so many different uh varieties of tobacco, so many different blends. And, you know, I smoked so many that some of them I was disappointed. They were, you know, marketed well, you know, had great, you know, stories behind them. But when you bought them, you were disappointed. Hmm. So I said to myself, what do you want when you buy a cigar? And the one thing that popped in my mind was consistent quality. Hmm. So it shouldn't matter what the bands say or what the price point is, it should be consistent quality no matter where you find it. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, I got the idea of like, you know, why don't you create your own? Because I don't like being disappointed when I spend my money to buy a cigar. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, create your own. And that's when I, you know, got the idea of creating Crosswind Cigars because Crosswind Cigars to me is a brand where if you are a cigar aficionado, somebody who's passionate about the leaf, mm -hmm. you can walk into a, uh, a lounge and go into the humidor and you see a Crossman cigar box there. You know when you reach for that cigar, that cigar is going to be consistent quality. It's going to be a great stick. And that's, and that's where I was going to get into. You being an owner, you having a love and a passion for cigars, and going to the business end of things, how do you distinguish your cigars from the thousands of other brands? Well, I picked my own blend. And um, what I did is I just took the time to try out different blends. And once I arrived at the blend that satisfied my palate, and I realized that the you know manufacturing partners that I have, they can consistently produce that exact same blend for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I want. Mm -hmm. And if we go from there, we just start marketing the product and getting it out to the people. So when it comes to cigars, and I'm, I'm smoking the Juanita right now. Crosswind Cigars this is a great smoke, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, tell us more about the characteristics that you like your personal cigars to embody. Well, characteristics that I like my, my cigars to embody are um, great draw. Um, the, the shape of the cigar has to be symmetrical, but also the leaf itself has to be, you know, soft, but not too soft. Mm -hmm. And also the ash, you see the ash on that? Yeah. The ash is awesome because 
that's that's the sign where it's white. That's a sign that you have a wonderful cigar. It's wrapped properly, and it has the right amount of air blowing through the shaft. Mm -hmm. And the tobacco is top-notch tobacco. You know, that's that's an indicator hmm. that you have a great cigar. Now, those are great things, right? Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking business as well, yeah. right? So what are some of the challenges that kind of present themselves when you're trying to do your own business, especially in the cigar business? Well, one of the challenges is, of course, dealing with, you know, the government, making sure that, you know, you cross your eyes, dot your eyes, cross your T's. That's the challenge. There's a lot of paperwork involved, licenses and things like that. Mm -hmm. The Once you get past all of that, then it's, uh, you know, making sure that you uh, get into the lounges. Now, lounges are very tough to get into because it's developing relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing about the cigar business, you have to develop relationships. Mm -hmm. If you develop the right relationship with the cigar lounge owners and also their customers, then they're more welcoming to you because this I'm a new brand. Mm -hmm. I'm crossing the cigars, no one's heard of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not McDonald's or anything like that. I don't wanna drop any names, but if you're not a household name, there's tough. You're up against a lot of, you know, established brands. So you're competing with, uh, you know, big name cigar manufacturers and you have to push through that. So you have, you have to be tena tenacious. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very tenacious person. I don't say, I don't get, I don't take no for an answer. You know, no to me is, okay, maybe. And I come back later on yes. and I try you again. Yes. And if you say no, I was like, okay, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back in a couple more weeks or maybe a month and we'll try it again. So. I keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Eventually, I'm going to get that yes. And once I get yes, then it's my time to, to shine. And that's where I, you know, put myself out there. I come, actually, this lounge, I come here almost on a weekly basis where I'm here sitting down with the customers and I'm talking to them while they're smoking a Crossman cigar. I'm actually in the humidor when they walk in and and I ask them, you know, what type of cigar are you looking for today? Have you heard about Crossman cigars? And majority, majority of the time, they say no. And I said, well, I'm the owner of Crosswind Cigars, and I want to introduce you to my my, my uh, brand. And they start looking at it, they start asking questions, I answer the questions, and they pay, and eventually they pick up the cigar and they're mm -hmm. like, okay, and they smell it. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing most cigars uh, fishing out of do. Sure. They smell the cigar and they're like, mm, it smells good. And I say, it also tastes good. Mm -hmm. You should try it. And once they try it, then they got it. Mm -hmm. They're like, yes. This is a great stick, man. Because mm -hmm. last night I was at an event, had a guy who never tried my cigar before. He bought one, he smoked it. And he was like, man, give me your phone. I'm going to Facebook Live right now. I'm gonna tell everybody about your cigar. Well, so that brings, like, that's awesome. <laughs> that, brings me to, that brings me to another topic, right? Because what you're talking about is sales. You have to be your own salesperson as well. Exactly. Right. So how do you approach the marketing? end of your cigars on um, the marketing piece of it i i look at demographics i look at you know we were talking about earlier looking at who's uh smoking what age group and where are they populated so mm -hmm. i look at that and i go to the lounges where i know that that demographic is there mm -hmm. um, most of the people that i market to are you know business owners people that have the you know the understanding and, and appreciate you know, quality cigars, but also the disposable income mm -hmm. to afford to pay for a premium quality cigar. Mm -hmm. And that's where I go to. I, 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 I target those, those de that demographic. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I, um, I've heard, I'm sure many people I've heard, you never mix business in, in your personal business. You have chosen to take a different stance with that. A lot of the cigars on your line are personal to you. Can you explain that? Yes. All of my cigars are named after my family members. These are the people that I love and I care about. And I decided to name them, name all my cigars after them. Because one, it's easy for me to remember them because they're named after my family members. So most cigars that are out there now, they, they have, you know, Latino names. I don't want that. Mm. Um, you know, this is a black owned company, so I want it to be personal. 
Mm. And so when you walk into a humidor and you ask for a you know crosswind cigar, and you say, I want the Juanita. You know, most yeah. people they probably have somebody in their family named Juanita. And that's, I do. Exactly. My grandmother's name is Juanita. Exactly. So <laughs> it, 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 hits, it hits you right here at your heart. It's like, hey, this Juanita is pretty good. And oh, by the way, it's named after my grandmother. So I'm digging it even more. Wow. So that's why I, I did that. You've been smoking cigars for quite some time. Yes, sir. Tell us about that first cigar experience. Oh, the first cigar experience I had, I was in Kuwait, as a matter of fact. And I was smoking with a friend of mine. His name's Abdul. Cool. He's uh, he's you know he's a rich rich guy. His dad's a, a Kuwaiti uh, oil minister. So you know we became friends. We we're actually doing a desert safari. We were driving dune buggies and stuff through the desert. And we stopped and we were just out there just talking. And he's like, Hey, you know, Ian, have you ever smoked a? Uh, a uh, Rocky Patel before. I was like, no, I never smoked one of those before. I mm-hmm. smoked other cigars, but never smoked them. So he brought it out and he's like, hey, this is one I um, I picked out for us today to smoke. So he took me through the ritual of, um, you, know, you know, cutting uh, the cap. And then he once he cut it, and I was like, okay, so what do we do next? And he's like, he lit it for me and he showed me how to toast it and, you know, get it ready. And then he asked him, I said, okay, is this like a, a cigarette? He's like, no, it's a cigar. This is what men smoke. Mm. So we, you know, he showed me that you don't inhale. You just bring it in and then you blow it out. Tell me you didn't inhale. And the first puff, I inhaled. <laughs> of course, and, right? Because I didn't listen. Right, right. <laughs> so I was choked up there and sure. he started laughing. He was like, Brother, I told you not to inhale. <laughs> it's like a natural, it's right? It's a natural reaction. thing. It's yeah. a natural thing to do. Yeah. When you when you in, when you pull in on a cigar or right. a cigarette, yeah. you want to inhale. Of course. But after that, you know, that initial, you know, experience of choking, I figured it out and we smoked that cigar, I would say, for a good hour and a half. And yeah. while we were talking, he told me about his life. Mm-hmm. I told him where I'm from and my life. And I was in the military at the time. So I explained to him, you know, the, the, the rationale for us being in the country and what we wanted to do in the country from, from my understanding, from my command and all the way down. And we became friends. And wow. that's, that was my initial, initial you know, um, smoke. He introduced me to his cigars and I introduced him to, you know, my, my, my life and the Marines and, and what we're there for and why we're there. And, the fact that we, you know, we love democracy and all of that good stuff. So mm-hmm. we had a good time. Wow. It was great. Wow. Yeah. So you being an experienced smoker now, give some of the novice smokers out there the do's and don'ts of the basics, the, the fundamentals of cigar okay. smoking. Basics of cigar, and I'm talking to all these novices that are out there. If you haven't smoked a cigar in, in, your, in, in your life, do not, first thing, do not start out with a sweet cigar, okay? You have to develop your palate. That's one thing you have to understand, develop your palate. You develop your palate by trying different cigars, trying Connecticut's, trying Maduro's, trying different gauge sizes, but definitely do not start out with a sweet cigar because a sweet cigar, it totally disrupts your palate. Mm. And you start off on the wrong foot and you're always craving sugar. Mm. That's what it's basically a sweet cigar is. You're smoking tobacco infused with sugar. Mm-hmm. So start out with a regular cigar. Most likely, I suggest you start out with a Connecticut, uh, a Juanita, or some other Connecticut broadleaf based cigar. And then from there, you develop your palate. And you can start trying it with different uh, wines or, you know, hard liquor. You can try that. Uh, another thing is don't smoke until you have a good meal. That's very important. Mm. Eat a good meal, and then after you have a good meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever, then definitely enjoy a cigar. I love enjoying a cigar after a good steak, um, and you know, with potatoes and, and, and whatever. Mm. And then after that, you have a good glass of, uh, you know, cognac, or um, I like um, wine. I like uh, red okay. wine. Okay. So I'll enjoy, a, you know, a good, uh, 
you know, Crosswind, Maduro. This is actually named after my brother. This one is called Justin. Okay. So um, I will enjoy one of these after a good, you know, a good meal. Uh, another thing is, you know, always uh, listen. You know, when, when you talk to other people that are cigar aficionados, listen to their advice because they can, they can steer you away from the bad habits of, uh, you know, most cigar mm -hmm. uh, smokers. You know, most cigar smokers, they, uh, you know, they brag about, you know, having, you know, Cuban cigars, you know, that's fine. But what we're finding is uh, a lot of these people that talk about Cuban cigars, they actually buy them from Mexico <laughs> and they're not real. Yeah. yeah. So don't brag about a Cuban cigar. Yeah. Okay. Just, just be humble, mm -hmm. go in, sit down, listen, enjoy your cigar and exchange, you know, whatever stories you have yeah. about life lessons, people, whatever, but you know, brag about your cigar. Well, you're, you know, the, everything he says is absolutely true. Um, you have a lot of experience deep into the culture of cigars. Off camera, you were telling me about, you used to pick tobacco. Talk about that experience. Oh my God. Yeah. Picking tobacco. I picked tobacco in Connecticut and uh, actually in Windsor Locks two seasons Jeez. that's why i was in high school so i did it to you know have something to do in the summertime but also to make money i was always a you know eager kid i didn't want to sit there and not do anything mm -hmm. i wanted to help my mother out um to buy clothes for my brothers mm -hmm. so my friend milan coachman i'm shouting him out he's uh my best friend he and i um heard about um, picking tobacco in the summer. So we got an application and filled it out and we were, uh, we hired. Crazy thing about it, I didn't know anything about picking tobacco. Mm. And my first day, we went to uh, get on the buses to pick us up to go pick tobacco. Mm. And I had khaki pants on, light colored khaki pants on. So everybody was looking at me like, this guy looks, he's stupid. He's wearing khaki pants to go pick tobacco. Everybody had <laughs> jeans on. They were grimy looking jeans, yeah. dark colored clothes. And I'm here with khaki pants on. Mm. So we went to go pick tobacco first day and culture shock. Uh, the, the farm owner was telling us what to do, how to pick the tobacco. And it was rows and rows and rows of tobacco. I strapped on my, uh, my uh, uh, rope that was attached to the bin that you pulled up the the aisle to uh -huh. pick the tobacco. And when I, my first uh, leaf that I pulled is from the bottom. So I hit it and came off and the morning dew from the, the tobacco stalk fell right on my head, <laughs> got wet, the first one. Wow. And I was, my pants and then also the uh, sap from the tobacco leaf went right on my pants. <laughs> And immediately I was like, I see why everybody's wearing grimy <laughs> pants, right. dirty jeans or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, my pants were ruined that day. My, my shoes had nice shoes. I thought it was like, you know, cakewalk <laughs> type of uh, job. It's work. It's work. Yeah. And, but I enjoyed it because it was hot mm -hmm. and you had, you know, a lot of, you know, temperature, you know, uh, climate and all that stuff against you. So I like challenges. So and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna let this beat me. It's hot. It's like a hundred something degrees out there in the field in Connecticut. And I was like, you know what? I signed up for this. Yeah. This is this is a challenge that I'm going to meet. Mm -hmm. But someday I'm I'm gonna be able to tell somebody about this that I picked tobacco and I was proud of it. Mm. And I did it. I did it not only one season, I did it for two seasons. Wow. That's and great. I enjoyed every minute of it. And I and, and the payoff was when I got my check and I saw that I worked for this money and I presented it to my mother and I said, Hey mom, it's my check. Wow. You know, do whatever you need to do with it. And she she took it, I signed it, and she put it in the bank and we used that money to buy clothes for my brother, both of them. Wow. For uh, for the school year. So that's, I felt proud of that. That's that's great. There are a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs that are watching. What 
advice would you give someone who's looking to turn their passion into a business? One thing that I that I learned, and I read a lot of stories of other entrepreneurs before I got into cigar business. The one thing that I learned and it stuck with me is do what you're passionate about. Mm. If you're passionate about it, it won't feel like work and you're going to put 100% effort into it. Mm. Um, but also do your due diligence. You know, make sure that what you want to do, um, you learn everything about it. So you go in with the full knowledge of, you know, this is what it's going to take to, to succeed. Yeah. You know, go to, go to the library, read about it, learn the laws and regulations about it. And also with this day and age of, of YouTube, yeah, YouTube it. I'm sure somebody's out there doing it. Mm -hmm. So YouTube it and see what, what everyone else is doing. But also, once you see whatever everyone else is doing, brainstorm. Brainstorm about it and figure out how can I do it different mm -hmm. and make myself unique. Yes. And that's the other advice I would give you. Be unique. Don't try to mimic everybody else. Change it up yeah. and be unique so that you stand out from everybody else. That's great advice. Thank you. I think you've had so much success. There had to be some events in, in, in your journey that weren't so successful. Can you talk about some of the things that kind of failed, didn't work out the way that you thought and how you recovered from those mistakes? Okay. Well, we had a, um, an, a, an event that I, that I did, that I put on and um, I promoted it and it just bombed. I mean, we, we, didn't, we didn't have a lot of response to it. And uh, the reason that I saw that you didn't have a lot of response to it is just people were, you know, they didn't know the brand. And then the people that I was involved with, they didn't support it. Mm. And, um, you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't get behind it 100%. They didn't understand the vision. Well, the way I recovered from that is I made sure that whoever that I did business with the next time, that they believed in me, they believed in the vision. Mm. And they put the utmost support behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, promote, promote, promote. And now that I, whenever I do an event, I do events with people that I know that understand what Crosswind Cigars is all about. They know me personally. They've mm -hmm. been to my house. We smoke cigars together. And they put the full-fledged support behind the event. And I mean, it's to the point where we're out there, you know, putting the tables down, yes, putting the, the tablecloths together, mm -hmm. getting the DJ. I know the DJ, so you know, setting, having him setting up, carrying him in his crates, you know, setting up his uh, table That's awesome. and everything. So, you know, I work with people that I know. And that's the thing that I that I realized after that is I hey you can't work with everybody yeah. because not everybody's going to. Well, it goes support. back to building relationships. Right? Exactly, you're meeting people, you're building relationships, yeah. right? And therefore, you like to work with those people. Um, I love the brand. I, I think this is one of the better smokes that I've had in a long time. Thank you, man. Um, where do you see the future of Crosswind? Well, I see the future of Crosswind uh, cigars getting into the hands of all the cigar aficionados. What my, 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 my goal ultimately is to get into everybody's humidor. Mm. Whether it's a small humidor, you know, you have 50 sticks mm -hmm. or the travel humidor. You know, when you open it up, my vision is to have a cross from a cigar in everyone's humidor. Good luck. I think you're going to make that happen. I appreciate it, I man. appreciate you being another guest on Beyond the Smoke. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Ian Ferguson, Crossman right. Cigars, Beyond the Smoke. Till next time.